Good day, great tens. Welcome to the second lesson in the test week revision. Um, in this lesson, we're going to carry on looking at algebraic expressions. The first thing we need to look at is how to multiply a binomial times a trinomial. Now, it's exactly the same procedure as multiplying a binomial with a binomial, but let's go through it nice and slow to make sure you guys know how to do it. So, what are we going to do? We're going to multiply the first factor of our binomial with each of the terms in the trinomial and then we multiply this 2 with each of the terms in the trinomial and then what are we going to do? We're going to add our like terms and we're going to make it all pretty. So let's do that nice and slowly. So x times x squared is x cubed plus x times x is x squared plus x times 3 is 3x. Right, now let's do the next one. Plus 2 times x squared is plus 2x squared. Plus 2 times plus x is plus 2x. Plus 2 times plus 3 is plus 6. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add our like terms. So there's only one x cubed here, so we're going to go x cubed then plus x squared plus 2x squared gives us 3x squared plus 3x plus 2x gives us plus 5x plus 6 okay and that is the answer so there you go and what you should notice is a binomial times a trinomial is 90% of the time going to give you a cubic a cubic Okay, I say 90% of the time because sometimes the trinomials, trinomial just means something with three terms in it. So this could be an x to the 4, an x squared, and a 3, and then it won't give you a cubic, it'll give you x to the 6. Okay, but when I say cubic, I mean something with a term with the power of 3 in it. Okay, now let's do the next question. So, it's exactly the same type of principle, except we suddenly have the second letter in it, the second variable of a Y, but it really is the same. So, we're going to take it nice and slowly this time. I'm going to show you how we multiply each of the terms so you can see how we do it. So, we get X times X squared, X times X squared, and then we go plus X times 2XY, and then we go plus, and why is it always plus? Because there's a plus in here, it's implied plus a plus here, and each of these terms is a plus, which is why I'm getting a plus every time. So it becomes x times 4y squared, and then we go plus, and I'm going to put a big bracket, and we're going to change color, let's do purple, and we're going to go minus 2y times x squared, so we've got minus 2y times x squared, plus, and again it's minus 2y times by positive 2xy plus, and again this term is minus 2y times by 4y squared. Now you may think I'm being overly pedantic by putting these minuses in, but grade 10 is a number of times I've seen students get these questions wrong because they don't put the minuses in and then they don't multiply it in and then they get it all wrong, which is just silly because they know how to do it, they just have forgotten the minuses. So let's be pedantic, which means be nitpicky and put the minuses in and then you can make sure you get the sum right. Okay, so let's multiply these things out. So, x times x squared is x cubed, plus x times 2 is going to, well, it's just going to be 2, x times x is x squared, y, plus, in this case, there are no similar terms, so it's just 4xy squared. And now I'm going to leave the bracket here, and we're going to multiply each of these terms first, and then we will multiply it out. So, minus 2y times x squared becomes minus 2x squared y. And you notice I turn these around. And it's only because the convention is you do these in alphabetical order. So you always put these letters in alphabetical order. Just to make it look pretty. Okay, now plus bracket. Minus t times a plus is a minus. 2 times 2 is 4. 
we've got one X but we've got two Y so it becomes Y squared plus okay minus times a plus is a minus two times four is eight and Y times Y squared is Y cubed okay so now let's see we've got no similar terms here so we just keep on writing it X cubed plus two X squared y plus 4xy squared plus times the minus is minus 2 okay so then it becomes minus 2x squared y plus times the plus is a plus times the minus is a minus 4xy squared plus times the minus is a minus 8y cubed and now we see if we've got any like terms I'm going to change color again Okay, so we got 1x cubed, so we're writing it as x cubed. Then, this is a 2x squared y minus 2x squared y, so they go away. Awesome. This becomes plus 4x squared y minus 4xy x squared y, x y squared, awesome, goes away. And what are we left with? We're left with minus 8y cubed. Beautiful. Okay, so that is actually the difference of two cubes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right, let's look at something different. Oh, it's not different, it's just more complicated. So we've got x plus 1 over x times by x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And again, we're going to take it nice and slowly. We're going to multiply each of these terms out. So we've got x times x squared is going to give us x cubed. x times minus 1 is going to give us minus x. And let's write this one out, it becomes plus, okay, plus x times by 1 over x squared. Then this times this gives us plus 1 over x times by x squared times by minus 1. Why is that a minus? Minus times a plus is a minus. Minus 1 over x times by 1. And that's a plus, so we've got plus 1 over x times by 1 over x squared. Right, so let's now multiply this out. So we've got x cubed, I mean just multiply the bits and sort out these different terms, minus x. This is over 1 again, remember it's an implied 1. So x goes into x squared, leaves you with 1 over x. So it becomes plus 1 over x. And then plus, this x cancels with one of these x's to become plus x. This is just minus 1 over x. And then this becomes plus 1 over x cubed. So now let's add our like terms. We've got only 1 x cubed. There it is, x cubed. We've got a minus x and a plus x. So they go away. And we've got a 1 over x minus 1 over x go away. And we've just got a plus 1 over x cubed. How nice is that? Okay. Now, finally, the different type of equation we now have is we're going to multiply out the x minus a to the power of 3. Okay. So we let's do this. We go x minus a times x minus a times x minus a. Okay, so what I would suggest you do is you multiply out these two or the other two at first and then multiply with another x minus a. So this becomes, and we know how to do this, it just becomes, if we do the pattern, it's x squared. Then we take the two, so it's x minus a becomes minus ax and we double it, so it becomes minus 2ax. And a minus times a minus is a plus a squared. And we're multiplying that all by x minus a. Now, some of you might find it difficult to multiply a binomial with a trinomial if the binomial is at the back. So I am going to write it in the front. It becomes x minus a, x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you the pattern. We know the pattern of an a plus b all squared. It becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. We know that pattern. We've covered it before. Now I want to show you the pattern of when it is cubed. So let's go through it. First times the first is x cubed. 
x times minus 2ax becomes minus 2ax squared. x times a squared becomes plus a squared x. Okay. Then we've got minus ax squared. A minus times a minus is a plus. It becomes plus 2a squared x. And a minus times a minus is minus a cubed. Right, so let's add the terms. So we've got x cubed. This is minus 2ax squared. Okay, minus ax squared becomes minus 3ax squared plus a squared x plus 2a squared x becomes plus 3a squared x and then minus a cubed. So you can see there's a little bit of a pattern here. We've got an x cubed. We have a minus 3, a plus 3, and then an a cubed. And you'll notice it goes x cubed, x squared, x, and yet it goes a, a squared, a. But this pattern is a little bit more difficult to remember, so I'll totally understand if you rather just multiply it out every time instead of trying to remember the pattern. Right, let's carry on. Now we are looking at some common factors. So the first thing we want to do is take out the common factors of this. Okay, now you do agree there's an a yeah and an a yeah and a b yeah and a b yeah. Now the best thing to do is always remember to look for the biggest exponent that can go into both of them. So here we've got a squared, but yeah, we only have a. So the biggest exponent that can go into both of these is a. And here we've got b and here we've got b cubed. So again, the biggest of those is just a b. So we take out a b. And what are we left with? a squared goes into a, leaves you with an a, and the b divided by b is a 1, so we don't write it. Plus, a goes into a once, and b goes into b cubed, b squared times. And that's it. There's nothing more we can do with that. We've taken out the common factors. Now remember common factors is like the first step of factorizing. The very first thing you do when you factorize is always look for common factors. So that's why we're doing these really basic examples to remind you that the very first thing you always do when you're factorizing is look for common factors. So yeah, if we look at this, we can do it slowly in two steps. Our common factors, let's look at the numbers. Do you agree 3 goes into both 3 and 6? So I can take out a 3 and we're left with x cubed minus 2x squared. Now, if you don't see it immediately, you can realize that we can take out an x here. You might not have seen that you can take out an x squared. So if we take out just one x, let's just show you what happens. You go 3x, x goes into x cubed and you're left with x squared minus 2. x goes into x squared and you're left with x. And then if we do it again, we can see that there's still x is left, so we're left with 3 x times another x, and this time you're left with x minus 2, which is 3x squared x minus 2. But hopefully you guys, by now, since this is a revision week, will have realized that since this is an x squared and this is an x cubed, you will have seen that you can actually take out the x squared and you go straight to this line here. Now let's look at the difference between two squares. Okay, now if we do it slowly and we do it in the way that you would use the distributive law, you will see that we end up with a pattern. So let's do that slowly first and then let's see what we end up with. So x times x is x squared. x times minus 5x, I mean minus 5 is minus 5x. 5 times x is plus 5x and 5 times minus 5 is minus 25, which becomes x squared, these cancel and it's minus 25. So if you've got the difference of two squares, the rule is you square the first, you square the last, put a minus in between them. So let's do that. So you go 3a squared is 3a all squared, put a minus between them, square the last, 2b all squared, which becomes 3 squared is 9a squared minus 2 squared is 4 and b squared is b squared and there's your answer. 
Okay, again, it doesn't matter if this is just an A or this is P squared. The simple rule the difference between two squares is if this term is the same as that term and the second term is the second, same as this one and it's just this difference, it's the only difference between them is the minus sign, then you can apply this rule which goes square the first term, so it's P squared or squared, square the last term, so that is 6 squared and put a minus between them. So p squared is p to the 4 minus 6 squared is 36. Nice and easy here. Huh? So square the first term, square the last term, put a minus in between. That's it. And that's it, grade 10 for this lesson. Please go practice, practice, practice and then go do the questions in the turnable assessment. Have a great day.